Hello, good afternoon everyone and to other to other viewers who may be watching outside of the Philippines if you are uh, good morning in your place right now. Yes, I am very much delighted to be invited to speak on this webinar. Uh, the topic is Toolkit in Guiding Students to Succeed Online. Before we get it started, I would just like to give thanks, extend my gratitude to the President and CEO of APA IETI, Dr. Raquel D. Bernabe. Thank you very much, Ma'am, for inviting me over to talk about in this webinar, uh, Third Wave for Free Webinar. I hope everyone stay tuned with me for the next 30 minutes. I, I hope to be able to justify your time with me and you may find few things that you can uh, work with it, uh, use it, apply it at the end. You find it useful, insightful, and interesting, a few things maybe. Um, uh, just a few things before we get started. You've already registered for this webinar. Uh, so you will have to listen, stay tuned, watch uh, and share, subscribe for Apayati, FB and YouTube webpage. In the end, you will uh, fill out an evaluation link to avail of our e-certificate for free. Okay, so I would just want you to sit back, relax and enjoy as I share. Okay, uh, let me get started by sharing my screen. Okay, so our topic for today is Toolkit in Guiding Students to Succeed Online. All right, so I am a member of the Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute. So what is exactly expected in today? Just to give background of myself, a backgrounder, I am a recipient of a Fulbright Scholarship Program for the International Leaders in Education Program. I was assigned at Arizona State University, USA. I belong to Jose Rizal University research team and had had the chance to present in many international research conferences, even outside of the Philippines. And by heart, I would say I've always been a gregarious, voracious learner for life. And currently, I am the chairperson in the education department at Jose Rizal University. So what is expected for us in this webinar uh, are a few things. So I have bulleted them, the future and the challenges, the 21st century skills, the characteristics of a 21st century teacher, and perhaps a reflection towards the end. Well, the three to one goal, okay, I've mentioned there, um, you will be able to reflect on three things that you have learned, relearned, and unlearned. So my focus is all about 21st century skills education, but as a disclaimer, I will not be able to discuss comprehensively these century skills. I was given only 30 minutes to, for this webinar. I wouldn't be able to cover all those things and I'm not that super expert to discuss on those century skills. So uh, one aha idea, aha moment, maybe you have heard from my discussion for today or maybe while you are listening or watching my webinar, you may have thought of a great idea then that's okay, that would be your aha moment, aha idea. I hope you'll have the able, uh, be able to have that chance in today's webinar. So stay tuned, relax, and enjoy. So we go ahead. Of course, uh, I'm an avid fan of Stephen Covey, Covey okay? So he said, uh, mentioned like, um, begin with the end in mind. So I just thought in this webinar, um, how would I want to end the goal with in, in relation to my topic? So at the end, I would want to become a better teacher, if not the best version of myself ever. Uh, next would be, I want to be a part of my students' success or successes, if they would have many successes. And third, I hope that I'll be able to make impactful memories among my learners. So the finish line, the, the goal is we would want to um, focus on the goal, the outcome. 
All right, so my topic has something to do with toolkit. So by definition, I got this. Uh, on the third, I would want to, you to focus on the third. It says there a fixed set of procedures, guidelines, criteria, or established to ensure a desired or required result. Okay, so that is the definition of toolkit. And in relation to the OBE or outcome-based education that we were part of, we have to have the goal with the end in mind. All right, so we would want to go ahead and let's just physically um, describe the tools in building a house. Well, it would have a designer, an engineer, an architect, but uh, a carpenter would have a carpenter uh, tool or a toolbox, you call them, uh, you call it. So uh, these tools would require many, uh, many tools to build a house. So in like manner, we don't necessarily get all these tools um, all at the same time. So we will have their classify them as essential tools, uh, primary or secondary in, of importance perhaps. So likening ourselves as teachers being the front liners to making sure, ensuring that our learners will have achieved the desired result of their competencies and skills towards the end of, our, of their education. So then therefore we are beset with what are exactly the essential tools for the 21st learners. Remember our um, fast changing development right now in terms of technology, it is a push and button already with just a click of a finger, they could access all their, the information that any students uh, would like to get outside of our teaching classroom walls. Now, right now we don't have the four-walled classroom made of bricks and mortars, but now it's called the click. Just a click, they would see all the information that we are giving them. So how prepared are we? We are being challenged teachers. So just uh, give you a, uh, um, the idea of this is to give you information from what I've read um, from the director of the, for the Directorate of Education and Skills at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the case for the 21st century learning from uh, Mr. or Dr. Andres Sklater. I wouldn't know how to pronounce his name. All right, so he mentioned there that success will go to those individuals and countries that are swift to adapt, slow to resist, and open to change. So I've highlighted in different color those three key points. So how adaptive are we teachers? How is slow to resist when change demands? and how open is our mindset to change and adapt. So the task of educators, teachers, policy makers, uh, is to help countries rise to this challenge. Well, a century or a generation ago, teacher could expect that what they thought would last their students a lifetime. I'm not discrediting that the centuries, teachers in the centuries are inferior to what we have right now. No, there's no claim for that. Um, they are the best in their own era, but you know, we have to move forward because we are beset with the changing times and it's so dramatic, dynamic, it's compulsory, today because of rapid economic and social change. So schools have to prepare students for the acronyms JTP. What's this acronym all about? Yes, jobs, J stands for jobs that do not yet exist. Technologies that have not yet been created and problems that have not been solved or encountered. So you could just imagine we are teaching our students right now with jobs that do not yet exist. So how are we preparing our students if the jobs in the market will, are not yet 
created. So then there is a, um, uh, it is estimated that two thirds of children today will work in the jobs that currently don't currently exist. So in the, this is actually laid down in the 2016, the World Economic Forum released a list of 21st century skills. So what skills will make students succeed if they, we are being beset with this future and challenges? Well, obviously, as a frontliner in education, we really have to embrace change. Well, we may not necessarily directly like it, but we really have to make sure that we adjust to the changed. Otherwise, we'll be left behind. So then, therefore, there's a paradigm shift. So teachers, whether what age or generation we belong to, it's like being a new teacher again. I feel that myself. So we really have to learn the platform, learn to interact online, learn the functions, whether the LMS we use, the learning management system, maybe Canvas, Blackboard, Elliot, but we really have to start to head on, get the content, how will we be able to deliver effectively, to our students, all right, that would sound like, wow, I don't want change, but basically the mindset is we have to really move forward. We cannot stop the change right now. And um, we really have to renew our spirit to learn. Um, instead of struggling to give learners all the information they need to succeed in areas the teacher knows little about, we can use this to our advantage with our technology. We can support students as they make their own steps into different fields. It's about preparing learners to go beyond their learning, making sure they have the skills to do it, and then helping along the way as they build confidence to achieve. And so the 21st century skills I will cover for today are the four C's. So it's creativity, critical thinking, communication, collaboration. On the right side, on my right side, but you may be viewing on the left. Are we really preparing students to possess these skills? How has your role, my role as a teacher changed? So when we speak of about changing the role of a 21st teacher, uh, we need to serve, to serve our students as a guide, a mentor, a facilitator. Uh, not as, as if we all know anything and everything. Uh, we cannot provide everything to them, all this information. We can only guide them. We can only facilitate their learning because teachers need to be empowered as facilitators and motivators for learning so that we can also empower our students in turn. So let's get to what are uh, these creativity, critical thinking, communication, and collaboration all about. The ability to think critically and creatively uh, and the collective and to collaborate with others and to communicate not only sets students up for success in their careers, but also empowers them to lead happier, healthier lives. Obviously, there are other skills that are also important, which fall within these four areas. For example, entrepreneurship can be considered a skill of its own. Inquiry and problem solving are key. Emotional intelligence is one of the most important keys uh, to successful work and relationships apart from IQ. The bottom line, Education needs to be all about empowering students with transferable skills that will hold up to a rapidly changing world, not prescribed content that has been chosen for its past relevance. 
All right, these are the um, 20, why do we really need the 21st century skills? Why is it important? Because there was a workforce requirements survey. So the basic knowledge skills which they can acquire, are acquiring in a school setting, but how are this acquisition of basic knowledge be transferred to application, the applied skills? So as a teacher, I will really have to make sure that what I teach to my students in class should go beyond the application. Okay, so, so that my students will be ready for work in the future. Now, according to a research-based teaching and learning in the 21st century, on the question like what students learn, are they matching with what teachers teach, what students must learn? Will they be matching with what teachers teach? So for example, in, in, in many um, subject or, or disciplines, we may be incorporating these skills, graphic design, audio e editing, video edit, editing is across all spectrum in colleges presentation skills, collaboration, even the basic education can do collaboration, as long as the teacher will be able to explain clearly the mechanics, clearly how students will be able to do collaborative work. But creativity, we don't hamper students' creativity. We don't tell them this is what should be done and how it should be done. No, students should be uh, on an unlimited way on how they will do. Uh, something or as an output and you may be surprised i've been surprised several times or students outputs that they were able to uh, show their creativity in many uh, facets so then therefore we have to discuss the uh, seven characteristics of a 21st century teacher the first is teachers are adaptive Okay, what do you mean by adaptive with an A? Okay. okay, this means that teachers are able to adapt to whatever comes their way. Being a teacher in today's ever dynamic world means that we have to adapt to an ever changing technolo technology tools and changes that are being implemented in the schools. Smart boards are replacing chalkboards and tablets are replacing textbooks. And a first 20, uh, a first 20, a 21st century teacher needs to be okay with that. Next, teachers are lifelong learners. There is always something to learn, okay? These educators don't expect their students to be a lifelong learner, but we ourselves, must always be a lifelong learner. We must be up to date with the current educational trends and technology. We also pursue higher education and we are open to search for best practices in research. Teachers must be active learners themselves, learning new ways of teaching and learning alongside with our students. Because lifelong learning fosters creativity, enhances technology usage, and we become innovative teachers. There's a lot of things to learn. There are many things to learn. Teachers are tech savvy. Technology is changing at a rapid pace, and that means that a 21st century teacher is right along, is on the right side. So the latest technology, whether it's for lessons, for grading, will allow teachers like me and students to be able to learn better and faster. An effective teacher knows that learning about the latest gadget can truly transform our students' education. So uh, students are not just current on, on the new trends, uh, teachers must as well be. 
but really know how to master them. It shouldn't be overwhelming on our part. We, we shouldn't be uh, learning so many apps and tools for our students. We have to make sure that the apps or technology tools that we'll be using for our students will be appropriate to our assessment, to our activities. So growing up with this level of technology means growing up with a completely unprecedented amount of information at our own fingertips. So students' questions could be readily answered with just a quick search away. So one caution though, technology must be used strategically to benefit students with correct information. So we can guide our students with those credible, uh, safe web links or links that we can provide them. The fourth is teachers must know how to collaborate. Okay, remember the seeing collaborate for the 21st century skills for learners. So that that is also true to our teachers. An effective 21st century educator must be able to collaborate and work well within a team. Um, this is very important skill even in the past decade. It has shown great, uh, quite rapidly um, effective in schools. Learning is deemed to be more effective when we share ideas and knowledge within um, others, within our peers and others. Sharing your expertise and experience and communicating and learning from others is an important part of the learning and teaching process. Fifth is teachers are forward looking. An effective 21st century educator thinks about their students' future and we are aware of the career opportunities that may arise from them. We are always planning to ensure that no child gets left behind. So we need to focus on preparing today's children or learners for what's to come in the future. So that's being forward looking, curious, flexible. Next is teachers are advocates for the profession. So today's teachers are mm, paying close attention to what is going on in education and we need to address these issues head on. Effective teachers share their knowledge and expertise and act as a role model for our students. 21st century teaching means teaching as you have always thought, but with today's tools and technology. It means utilizing everything that is important in today's world so that students will be able to live and thrive in today's education as well as to have the ability uh, to guide these students and to prepare them for the future. Wow, what is this picture all about? It's a pathway, it's a, a long, long way to go, but it's refreshing, isn't it? Uh, it may be shaky because it may tend to be risky when you are walking in the middle, it tends to sway on the sides. But um, looking at the wrists when you will see the view, okay, it will be like, wow, it's a paradise view. So I would want you to use this um, path in uh, what the American cognitive psychologist and educator, uh, Jerome Bruner mentioned, that learning should not they only take us somewhere. It should allow us later to go further more easily. So when we intend to teach our students, we should provide them with not only the now, the here, then, and now teachings. It should go further to what they can apply in their future as a takeoff from today's webinar. So there are many um, ways to help children in order to, to be successful online. I may not be able to discuss them all together in this 30 minutes, 
but hopefully the ones that I've given you is a uh, an open mind to all teachers. I am also a teacher. So we keep on um, improving our way of teaching and um, we connect with our students to, to be able to help them, ask them what we can do to help them better to improve their uh, plight. So in the end, I would just like to thank you everyone for staying with me. Uh, and uh, if you want to have this uh, parallel, the one that I gave right now is for teachers, then I will be giving another webinar for Jose Rizal University uh, FB live stream on August 18 for students. What is expected as well for students to um, acquire in skills, attitudes, and learning activity uh, and communities for them to be successful online. So please get in touch with me if you want in my personal uh, Gmail account. If you need to have questions, we can collaborate, we can share. It's a learning um, um, community. We could create a learning community for us to share best practices uh, within our context. So, uh, I would like to thank you for staying with me and until the end. I hope that I was able to justify your time, take a few, um, few of the ideas from my webinar today. Again, thank you very much, uh, Apayeti, with our president who invited me here right now. To our viewers, I hope to uh, be able to communicate with you in the future. And uh, thank you for uh, tuning and uh, finishing this webinar for today. Thank you very much. Bye for now.